Hi, I'm Ruthie, owner of Defy the Status Quo, and you're listening to an episode of the Defiant Business Podcast, your Monday through Friday, 10-minute shot of business knowledge. So season two so far has focused a lot on understanding internal business you know, mechanisms and, and values and things like that. And we're actually going to continue on that vein. We are starting a series. So within season two, we're starting a series on company ideology and branding. So buckle up because we're going to dive deep for the next several episodes on how you can better understand your own business and in turn, better inform your marketing and sales efforts. So today, Today's episode is called Defining Your Company Ideology Values. So there's two parts. Your core ideology is your business's identity. No matter the technological advances, the developments in business strategy, your identity is your identity. Uh, Your business may go from local to regional to national to global and your identity stays the same, even if the tactics and strategies and goals that you have, even if those things change, your identity is the same. So ideology is made up of two parts, core values and core the core purpose. So today we're gonna focus on the values. Your core values are your organization's principles, right? It's It's, the few beliefs that you have that you hold to be true. So Johnson & Johnson CEO, Ralph Larson said it best. He said that we have them, the core values, because they define for us what we stand for. And we would hold them even if they became a competitive disadvantage in certain situations. So what this means is that there isn't a right set of values. It's true and it's different for each company. You can have emphasis on great customer service without it being one of your core principles. So you don't have to have, oh, okay, so our principles, you know, have to have customer service, have to have quality, have to have this. There are some companies that do not hold quality as one of their core principles because when asked about it, when they think about it, if quality was not a measurement for success in our industry, would we still want it to be important in this company? And if the answer is no, then it's no. Maybe being on the leading edge of technological development or or something like that is, is a core principle. So maybe quality is not, but innovation is, and that's how you need to move. So here's an example. Disney, Walt Disney has core values. And core values, you're normally, it's probably about three to five. The best companies, the greatest, the biggest, most longest standing companies, they don't have any more than five. Um, And the thing about Disney's core values is when we think about it, maybe we think about Mickey or something first, but Disney has gone way beyond animations, right? We've got theme parks all around the world, hotels that are themed for Disney, stores, toys, clothing, costumes, you know, for Halloween. Like it's it's embedded deeply within our culture and it goes way past animations. Best example I can think of, Marvel. Walt Disney owns Marvel and they are crushing it <laughs> when you think about it. And how, how does Marvel tie into their core values? Well, one of their core values is creativity and dreams and imagination. Superheroes have captured the world's imagination. Whether you're a child or an adult, the sort of following that these movies has that these movies have is almost baffling. And I mean, I love I love the movies, I love the comics, and that's what you have to consider is that Walt Disney, like comics, movies, TV shows, all of it. When we look at another one of Disney's core values, control over the Disney magic, you can understand one of their latest business moves. Disney is pulling away from Netflix and developing their own platform, which we'll have to subscribe to because we love Disney. And if they're not going to be on Netflix anymore, what am I going to do? Right? I've got four kids. We need Disney. So I see another subscription in my service or in my future rather. 
But Disney isn't a technology company, but they're willing to become or at least offer a technology platform for consuming their content in order to hold true to one of their core values, which is, which is control over the Disney magic. So at first it just kind of seemed like maybe Disney was being petty. Like, why are they gotta pull this from Netflix? You know, everybody's pulling things from Netflix and Amazon's making their own stuff. Disney's obviously making their own stuff, but now they're making their own platform, right? Why would they do that? It costs money to do that. And that's true, but it holds to their values. And that's the thing about values is that even if they're a disadvantage, even if they may detract or lower things like the bottom line, Disney has assessed that in the long run, building this platform and hosting their own content holds true to their values and therefore adds, you know, is, is true to their ideology, their identity as a company. And so I am sure that we're going to see some awesome things coming, you know, moving forward from Disney. So again, like I said, three to five values is probably about what you want to have. And it's something that, you know, you're probably going to have to think about. And it's, it's, you know, and you can have core values even for a department. So maybe you're within a company and you're the head of a department. You could have core values there too. Um, but if you're a CEO of a growing company, even an established company, if you've never gone through the exercise of establishing company values and, and beyond things like, you know, we value trustworthy relationships with our clients. Oh, geez, I was working, looking for an untrustworthy company. So I guess I should just move along. Don't, don't say things that don't really mean anything, you know. Uh, some things are just a given. So if you are going to say something about trustworthiness, you're going to have to make it real good. All right. So ask yourself when you're considering your values, would you still want these values if there was a disadvantage to you, if there was no benefit, but an actual disadvantage to your company to hold these values? Would they still be values that you would want to hold at the company's core? All right. This has been an episode of the Defiant Business Podcast. I look forward to seeing you again next time.